Kratos, the son of Zeus and a powerful god killer that wiped out the Greek pantheon. Now he fights trolls, dark elves, dragas and hellwalkers, and even some of the toughest Aesir gods of the Norse realm. But a question that keeps coming up is, how did Kratos get to Midgard? When we pick up the 2018 game, he is burning the body of the wife he loves dearly, one that he has been in a relationship with for decades and fathered a 13-year-old son with. And there is barely any mention of his time before that. So how did he get there? Did he just stroll into the realms of the Norse mythos? Well, it turns out kind of, but it's way more interesting than that. I've been doing some reading of two very cool and important books relating to God of War. One is the novelization of the 2018 game written by Cory Barlog's father, which tells the story of the God of War 2018 game but with much more detail and the other is called God of War Lore and Legends which is a journal style book from the perspective of Atreus and buried deep in these books I believe I found a memory that Kratos brushes off as a dream one that shows him being attacked by wolves and a woman commanding them in a cloak and it is my theory that this woman is none other than our Laufey the Just aka Fae Let's break this down. My name is Eddie and if you enjoyed this video hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more God of War theory videos like this one. There are crazy theories on this channel you should go check them out. I think they're pretty awesome. All right let's continue. All right so first things first we have to break down the timeline of events to get a better understanding of things. According to the Lawn Legends book and Atreus's own timeline of events Kratos tells him that he arrives in Midgard around 115 years ago. He lives alone in the woods during a time of a bitterly cold winter winter. A winter that frightens Odin according to Mimir because he believes it's Fimble winter. The winter that spans three summers and precedes Ragnarok. But after Kratos arrives the winter passes. Nothing else is mentioned by Atreus around this time and nothing about how Kratos got there. He just arrived according to him. 115 years sounds about right as Freya says that the world serpent arrived in the lake of Nine and submerged Tyr's temple for almost 150 years which lines up nicely because later when we get into the temple we do find a vase featuring Kratos after what he has done with the previous events of the previous God of War games and Mimir refers to him as the ghost of Sparta in Helheim and Mimir was bound to the tree at the top of the mountain for 106 years so he would have to have learned about Kratos's doings in the other pantheon before that time so that all lines up Fast forward 65 years and Kratos claims that he meets Faye for the very first time. Notice I said claims there. And both being warriors, they attack each other, but they both yield just as quickly and begin to talk about how they are both sick and tired of wars and fighting and become friends. I think they become a little bit more than that. It's worth noting here that Atreus did ask his father how he never suspected that Faye wasn't a normal woman based on her looking as young as she did before she died. And Kratos blames it on being centuries old and not really noticing age anymore so yeah an interesting little tidbit there another five years later Kratos and Faye settle down to build a house together he explains his past and what he's been through but Faye doesn't say anything regarding her gianthood and she doesn't tell him what she's doing in Midgard either fast forward another 22 years and Faye gives birth to a boy they call him Atreus and raise him together and then 13 years later Faye mysteriously dies with no mention how or why and then we play out the events of the 2018 game. Now, if you've been following my previous theory videos like this one, you know that my big theory is that Faye, along with the help of a great seer, Grower the Knowledge Keeper, Faye has seen the events of this timeline, one different to the original Ragnarok prophecy in Norse mythology. And Faye knows exactly what needs to happen in order to fulfill the prophecy where the giants aren't wiped out at Ragnarok, but instead the Aesir gods are. Let me read you a little passage from the God of War novelization. Minutes after exhaustion drew drew Atreus into a dreamless sleep, he was awoken by the turmoil of thrashing arms across the room. Kratos, engulfed in a tormented sleep, battled a foe existing only in his mind's eye. This next part is inside Kratos' mind in his dream. Kratos held a defensive stance, his back against a rock wall, his blades out to defend himself from a trio of howling wolves twice his height. One black with verdun eyes, one white and the third grey. The black beast seemed to be the alpha, assuming the most forward position. A beardless god of war, clad in the clothes of his life in Greece, slashed his blades of chaos to keep the predators at bay, but his actions failed to discourage their assault. Kratos realised he needed to bring down at least one 
one of these wolves if he hoped to survive their onslaught. The white wolf advanced as if on command. The movement revealed a woman behind the beast, clad in a long cloak and a cowl obscuring much of her face. Her raised arm sent all three creatures airborne to attack. Who are you? Kratos screamed with all the force he could muster, just as the black wolf ripped into his thigh to drag him away. The dream vanished in that moment with Kratos springing upright in his bed. The red and orange of a rising morning sun bathed him with relief. Sweat drenched his clothes and his bed. Quiet consumed the house. His son remained asleep across the room. Kratos thought for sure he had screamed the words out loud, but his son's continued slumber indicated they had merely been part of his nightmare. For a long moment, he struggled to recall the woman's face. His arms ached despite respite of the night. I believe this is not a nightmare or a dream, but a memory. A memory of how Kratos got to Midgard. I think that he did leave Greece after the events of the last game and trekked north for a very, very long time. The part where he is described as beardless and in the clothes of his life in Greece indicates that. And the three wolves I believe to be the wolf giant Fenrir and his two sons, Skull and Hattie. Three characters core to the events of Ragnarok. They attacked him and dragged him from the middle of nowhere to the point in which Kratos Kratos told Atreus he came to Midgard, to the place in the woods where he stayed for decades. The reason why I think these wolves are the notorious sun and moon chasers and their father is because in the novelization book, when Atreus and Kratos are in Tyr's vault, when they see the mural puzzle of Skull and Hattie, this is what Kratos thinks in that moment. It's the wolf giants, Skull and Hattie, Atreus pointed out. Kratos stared at the beast with a shiver of recognition. The image of him dressed in his Greek attire, being dragged by the verdant-eyed black wolf while the others flanked either side flashed like lightning across his mind. Were those the creatures that had brought him to this land? He could not recall them being that large. The beast that attacked him had determined his fate against his will, but for what purpose? What was he meant to be in this land? Exactly, Kratos. Why? Why would they do that? Why did they drag him and drop him in Midgard if they were attacking him? The woman in the cloak commanding them is the reason. The woman commanded Fenrir, Skull and Hattie to attack Kratos and bring him to Midgard and the reason they listened is because she is their grandmother slash great grandmother. Faye aka Laufey the Just. Faye was told of the events of this new timeline and how Kratos would drastically change the events of Ragnarok should he come to Midgard, and Faye took the wolves to get him and bring him to begin the events of this new splintered timeline. Faye is the reason Kratos is in Midgard and now fighting the Aesir gods for his son and his own life. Faye knew this all from the beginning. Is this not the coolest wraparound story you have ever heard? I really think this is cool and it shows that Sony Santa Monica Studios have the ability to make really, really great thought out stories if this turns out to be right. I think it is. It seems really likely. There is one thing about it though, where Kratos does say, the beasts that had attacked him had determined his fate against his will. That might come into play again. Will Kratos feel like he had been forced into another god's plan or something? A bit like the previous games? It's going to be interesting to see how he takes this, knowing that his fate was planned all along. Let me know what you guys think of this theory in the comment section, guys. I think it's pretty awesome, but you guys can let me know. If you have any criticisms of the theory, also drop that down in the comment section. And uh, if you've got any better theories as well, feel free to let me know too. All right, guys, I'll see you guys all in the next one.